Okay, we have James Madison on the podium. We have head coach Mark Byington, senior forward Julian Wooden, junior guard Terrence Edwards Jr. We'll start with an opening statement from coach, then we'll go to questions for the student athletes, do about five minutes of that, then we'll dismiss them and go to questions for coach. James Madison locker room also is open at this time. Coach, you want to start with an opening statement? Yeah, it was an extremely difficult night for us. And, um, you know, multiple reasons. Um, you know, when things come to an end, it, it, it's, it's, never, it's never a good feeling. Um, you know, these guys put so much into it. Um, it was an absolute pleasure and honor to coach them um, the entire season. Uh, just such a great, great group of guys. And they love each other. I love them. Um, I'll do whatever I can for them the rest of my life. And we ran into a Duke team I thought was very sharp. I mean, they, they came out and, um, you know, they put us on our heels and our mistakes compounded tonight. And it, was, it wasn't just one area. Um, sometimes we have bad areas, but it was too many things in one night to try to beat a good Duke team. And it was turnovers, free throws, um, not um, uh, rebounds. It was, it was a lot of things that we've been great at throughout the year and we weren't tonight. So um, there were two things with that, give Duke credit, and then uh, we weren't at our best, but um, it's not going to be something we're looking back on this team thinking anything less than that, that they made history this year. They are a tremendous basketball team. They left a legacy at JMU forever, and um, it, it's, it's tough it ends this way, but a lot of times when you make a run like this, it's going to end for, some, for certain teams, and, and it happened for us tonight. Again. Uh, questions for the student athletes, just raise your hand. We will get a microphone to you. Just give your name and affiliation before asking your question. Do we have any questions for Julian or Terrence? We'll start in the back on this side in front of me, last row. For either of the players, you guys did such a great job the other night being very physical and it seemed to fluster Wisconsin. I know you're trying to play that game all the time. When they hit those early shots, does it take back some of your physicality? Does it make you a little less aggressive on the defensive end at all? Let's start with Julian, and then we'll go to Terrence on that one. Uh, yeah, it just kind of gave him life. Uh, you can kind of tell that uh, it put us on our heels, like Coach said, and uh, it was just kind of put us in a hole. It was kind of hard to get out of. But um, yeah, I mean, I thought this team fought. We, we never gave up, and that's what I'm real happy about. Terrence? Yeah, it just Jew explained it all. Come to this side, we'll be on row one, and then we'll come on the other side. Uh, Jackson Hepner from the Breeze. Um, you know, definitely a difficult way to end the season, but just kind of talk a little bit about, you know, what it was like having that sort of support from JMU throughout the game, especially kind of towards the end when it was kind of becoming clear that Duke was going to win, but you know you guys were still fighting, and the, the fans were still cheering and everything. Start with Terrence on this one. Um, that's um, we appreciate that. You know, um, we we sorry we couldn't get the win today, but it just shows that um, all the work that we put in all season for the whole JMU community to come out and watch us play in March Madness all the way in Brooklyn. So, um, you know, it didn't come out the way we wanted, but we appreciate the support and. And now everybody knows who JMU is all over the nation, and that's what we do it for. And Julian? Yeah, pretty much exactly what Terrence said. Uh, I mean, they, they were huge. Uh, they were cheering even when we were down. And uh, you can kind of tell that they were super into it and kind of kept us locked in, too. So uh, yeah, shout out to them. Uh, well, we're definitely Dukes for life. We'll stay in row one. We're on the other side here of the out. Go ahead. Uh, Shane Bellum from the Daily News Record, Harrisonburg. Uh, for, for Terrence, um, you guys defended the three-point line really well all season, held teams under 30%. What was different about trying to guard Duke behind the arc? And, and McCain in particular, what was kind of the scouting report on him going in? Um, I can kind of say, you know, when you got a big like um, um, Filipowski, you know, he's very skilled. He's a real good passer, and he's 6'10". So um, when you going in to try to get the ball out, it's kind of difficult um, guarding two when you're rotating like that. but. Um, you know, it's, that's what just happened when you play um, good, good players, you know. Um, shout out to him for passing the ball well tonight. Um, yeah. We'll stay on this side, end of the row, row three. Go ahead. Tom Marion with AP Radio. Terrence, what do you walk away with at the end of the season, the disappointment of tonight or the overall accomplishments? 
Um, most definitely the overall accomplishments. Being the leader of the team, you can't you know, um, let this sit. You got younger guys on the team that you got to be there for. So um, we, we did make a lot of history. Um, we surprised each other, I feel like. Um, going into the year, we didn't know it was going to be like this. But um, this is the best team, the best. Coach Bonson, one of the best coaches I ever had in my life. Um, he stayed on me. Uh, he's very smart. And shout out to him for like just, just coaching us up so well. And, and we just, we brung whatever he put in, he, whatever he coached us, we brung it to the floor. And that's why we was able to win so many games. We'll take one more question for the student athletes if there is one. Okay. Julian Terrence, you guys are dismissed. We appreciate you taking the time. I so appreciate y'all. Locker room is still open at James Madison, just so you can get them there if you do have questions for them. We'll take questions for Coach Byington. We'll start in row three on this side in front of me. Hey, Coach. Jordan Ronner from ESPN. What do you make of the way that they shot the ball, McCain in particular? I think as a team they shot 50% from three as well. Yeah, they came in different ways. And um, I thought our, our lack of rebounding got them inside, outside, um, second chance points. And then he got some in transition. And then, the, and then his team found him. Um, they made great passes to him. Um, we, we knew he's a great shooter. That wasn't a surprise. Um, it was easier to kind of figure out where he was um, when it was in a half court action. But when they got the rebounds and kick outs, we couldn't find him. In transition, we didn't find him. And um, he, he got off to a hot start. And, and he, he put us behind. And, and then we started compounding our mistakes by how well he was playing. Any other questions for Coach? We'll come up here on row. We'll go to row three and then to row one. On the aisle, row three. Mark, uh, Jerry Beach from Field Level Media. You took this job just the, the pandemic was starting. You changed leagues. You know, is, do you have time now to kind of think about the last four years have been like, or is that for down the road in, in the off season? Yeah, it's, it's probably going to come in the next couple of days. It, it, it really will. Um, you know, right, right now I'm hurting. It's, you know, I didn't want it to end with this team. I, I didn't, they didn't want it. And, and when that settles in, um, I will be more reflective and understand the great things that, that these guys have done this year and then where the program has gotten from, from where we started to where it is now. Um, but right now, it's, it's still too raw. Um, but I will get there. We'll stay here in row one this side. Uh, kind of along the same lines about you know, where the program has gotten. You, you talk to Terrence, you talk to Julian, and both those guys are saying stuff that they heard from Matt Lewis when they were freshmen. And um, with, all, with the way rosters turn over so quickly now, um, how do you build a culture and build on a culture like you have? And like, how do you keep that going from year to year? Yeah, it's extremely difficult. Um, I, I'm fortunate to, to have coached those guys for four years. And, and, and that's not normal. Um, it's, it's a great pleasure in seeing them grow as, as people and players. And, and then the value they have on the team of, of being around, what they can do, not just for themselves, but for everybody else, um, it can't be measured. It's extremely valuable. And it's probably not going to happen much in college sports anymore. Um, let's, let's talk basketball, probably not in basketball. But I can tell you why they stayed. Um, they, they love their teammates. They love JMU. And, um, and for them to have the season like this, to be rewarded for um, a history-making season, great playing, doing things, they deserve it. They absolutely deserve it. We'll go up here on the other side of the room, row one, and then we'll come back to you. Coach, I mean, this has been a remarkable run, especially considering the recent history of this program. Have you started to kind of think at all about where you would like to see the program kind of go in the future, you know, do you want to kind of see maybe, you know, March Madness become something that's a little bit more common for JMU or even just, you know, see the point. You've talked a lot about the difficulties of the Sun Belt being a, a single bid lead league, you know, how would you like to see sort of the league kind of evolve with the program? Yeah, it's probably hard to answer tonight. Um, but, but one thing I will say, I thought the Sun Belt prepared us. And the Sun Belt is, is a tough league. It's underrated league. Uh, I thought it really did prepare us for, for this moment, um, you know, to get here. And, and obviously, we didn't play great tonight, um, but we played really well the other night. And I, I thought it helped. And, 
you know, when you look at our scores and you look at our streaks and, and sometimes you devalue some of these other teams in the league, they're good and um, they're well coached. And, and uh, the Sun Belt, I would love to see multiple teams. I would, I would love to see that. Um, it's very difficult in a one-bid league. Um, but I could tell you this, the league got us ready. Uh, the league got us ready for this, for this moment and for this tournament. And we'll stay on the other side of the aisle, row one. Jarvis Heron, WHSV in Harrisonburg. Coach, I feel like you've been building this program for this point. So to reach the NCAA tournament the second round, is this kind of the new expectation now for JMU basketball moving forward? I mean, it's, you know, for a team to win 32 games and, and make it here, it's, if, if you say that's what our goal is, I think you're going to be unhappy or unsatisfied because it's very, very difficult to get here. And it's very difficult to do what we did. Um, but to have a championship level team that's able to compete every year, I think that's more the goal. And um, sometimes, you know, with the league, it's, it's difficult because there's one out of 14 teams going to make it here. And if it was different, then it'd be different. But uh, I think the expectation that when you're a coach, you want the team to get the best they possibly can get um, and take them as far as you possibly can take them. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm satisfied to know that, that I think we did that as a group, my staff and these, these players. And we ran into a team tonight that if they play like that, they're going to keep on playing. I mean, they, they were really, really good tonight. Take one more question if there is one. Okay. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. Thank you.